In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to assemble the mechanical rack driven seven segment display. So every single part in this model is 3D printed. If you haven't yet, you can get the files from my website or as one of my members, the links are in the description below. This is the only part that requires any support. The rest of the files can be printed without any support and it prints really well. These files are printed as a multicolor print, but you can also print them by just changing the color after a couple layers. And then these parts are only if you wanna add the servo, which is not necessary. You can get the servo from Amazon. There's a link in the description below and it comes with all the required hardware to assemble. So let's start by removing the supports from the follower pieces. And then you're gonna grab the bottom follower. So you can see these two are the same. This one's a little bit different. This is the one that goes in the lowest hole on the front plate. Just a quick note from this image, you can see which way the tabs need to be oriented inside the follower square. Slide that into place and then grab the rack piece, this little rack piece, and it will go with the teeth down and then you can C-clamp it into place. Next, grab a side rack piece and then with the rack in this orientation, it slides onto the two pins on the rack piece. C-clamp that into place. And then you're basically just repeating this the whole way up. Make sure that you're getting the racks in the right orientation. And there's a picture in the file package that shows you exactly how to do it, but they basically can only go in one way as long as you're alternating. So it's a little tricky to get these little tiny C-clamps onto the pins, but I have faith in you. If I was able to do it with my stubby fingers, you could do it as well. So the next one is a the middle rack piece and it's teeth up. Then we repeat the two side racks moving up. And it's very important that we do things in this order because it will be really hard to assemble if you don't. But as long as you're following these instructions, I promise you we're going to get to the, the finish line. Finally, add this top follower and this top rack with the teeth facing up and throw a C-clamp on there, and we can move on to the next step. Grab the back plate, and this just slides around all the followers, and then you just have to align the little prongs on the back of the followers with the holes in the back plate. And then, and just make sure that everything's moving smoothly. Now grab your bigger C-clamps and just drop them onto the, the plate and then push them onto the pins in the corners and you'll get a really satisfying snap on these. Grab the D temp piece. Now we'll go into the holes in the top plate and then you can just throw some C-clamps to hold that in place. Then the camshaft is gonna slide through the top of the top plate and it's gonna align with the D tent pin and you'll get this really satisfying motion there. Now we're gonna start stacking the cams and all the cams have numbers on them starting from one Yours won't have the numbers around the circle, so it's a lot less confusing because I was confusing myself. And you're going to slide them down the camshaft. There's a key, so you can't really get this part wrong as long as you're stacking one, then one eye, two, then two eye, three, then three eye. Next, you'll grab the spacer gear and that will slide on next to three eye. And then you'll go four, four eye, five, five eye, and so on until it looks something like this with seven eye at the bottom. Holding the camshaft straight up like this, grab the rest of the housing, flip it upside down, and then start finagling the cams into the center of the housing. It will take a little bit of wiggling and rotating and spinning, but eventually it will fall into place. Just make sure that your detent is facing forward and you'll get this really satisfying motion with the detent and all the cams and everything just working perfectly. Grab your segment piece and a pinion and with the teeth facing towards the front of the pinion, you can slide that into place and it will look something like this. And just note, it's supposed to be really tight. So if you're struggling to get it in, you can push it against the surface and that will help. And if it's loose, you might need a dab of glue. Your printers are too good. Now turn your dial until you're at one and then you can start with the top segment and it will align to the top flanges like this. Chuck one of the small four millimeter pins in to hold it in place. And you'll know if you have it in place, if it looks like this, and it might be a little hard to see. So here's a quick image. You want that last tooth on the pinion to be in the last space on the rack. 
Then you can throw a C-clamp into that. And you're basically just going to repeat this all the way around. If you follow my order, it might be easier. But you can, you can do whatever you want here. I would say just make sure that the segment's in the right position before throwing the C-clamp on. Because they're kind of hard to get off. Give it some tests to make sure everything's moving well. Looks like it is. Now I throw in the side ones. And then the bottom side one. And then I turned it to two so I could move one of the racks on the other side up. And I throw the lower segment in here. And then I turn the dial to five to expose the other top rack. And then I added the final segment with the pin. And then the final C-clamp and you're done. This makes a really great manual fidget desk piece. But if you want to motorize it, there is a servo attachment. Start by throwing the connector gear into this hole and C-clamping it into place. And you can take the entire mount and that will go onto the top of the servo. And you can use the screws that come with the servo to screw it directly into the plastic and it will hold it in place. You can actually screw it down surprisingly tight, but don't go too tight or you might strip the hole. Next, grab the big gear and this little screw that will screw into the servo itself and use the screw while holding the gear to push the gear down onto the servo spline. And this should give you a really tight attachment and you'll know it's good if when you spin it, you hear the servo doing its little whine. Next, grab one of these pins that goes into the back hole from the inside out. Repeat that with the other pin on the top. Before the next step, make sure that your servo is set to zero angle. So however you would program your servos. And then make sure that the display is set to zero. And then you can pop the entire servo attachment onto those pins and throw some C-clamps to hold it in place. Then flip it and just repeat that on the other side. You may need to nudge some of the cams out of the way. Make sure that you hold it tight and move it from the big servo gear so everything stays connected. Then repeat that for the lower pin, throw the last C-clamp on. And then you can use your code to find out which angles correspond to which numbers. In my case, it was every 20 degrees was the next number, which was super easy. And here's a really basic program that counts up once every second and then repeats back to zero, which is really satisfying and super fun. Maybe the next step is a clock, who knows?